does the 2025 BMW XM balance efficiency, luxury, and high performance? Hey everybody, it's Tom from Vehicle Visionary. I hope you're having a great day. Today we're going to go over the particulars on this XM and give you all the details to help answer that question that I posed in the title of the video. Here on the front end, we're going to see something that's a little different, quite a departure from other M models, which is going to be the gold with our logo right here. Also the gold surround on the double kidney grill. And I know things are a little bit dirty here. It's just the way it goes sometimes. People give you their vehicles to review and well, I'm not going to complain about it, but somebody probably will in the comments, but we'll go over everything anyway. I do like the fact that every vent is functional here on this vehicle. Not something you normally see on a lot of vehicles out there. And the nice large corner air curtains here that definitely allow for improved gas mileage. Why not when you're going to have this vehicle be something that is high performance, but also gonna give you that mileage that you're looking for when you aren't stepping on the loud pedal. Now, full LED lighting, headlights, daytime running lights. Now we do have the projector beam LED headlights, but they are LED nonetheless. And all wheel drive, not a surprise where that's concerned. As far as your tire and wheel setup go, we'll find the same 22 inch wheels on the front and the rear, but the tire sizes are going to vary. We're looking at 275 on the width here on the front, the 40 series sidewall. And the one question I have, why did BMW not make the M logo gold on the brake caliper right here, the same way as we saw with what's on the front end? And when we work our way back here to the rear, the width, a little bit more, a little wider, 315 and a 35 series sidewall. We're gonna have a geometric texture that hopefully shows up on the camera with the door handles, front and rear. So a little bit of a combination between the gloss black with that geometric texture and the body color and everything you want here with the side view mirrors. They're heated, they're power adjustable, they're power folding, and the turn signal indicators are built in. And I have to say, I really like how this gold stands out that surrounds the windows. It's on the upper portion of the doors right here. Compared to what we see on a lot of other models, it just works. What do you think about the color combination here? And of course, the XM logo right there and your charge port will be right here. And if you were wondering if your charge port locks, well, it does. That's why it didn't open in that previous scene right there. Had to unlock the interior. That's a good thing in case you're thinking somebody might try and tamper with it and do something, you never know. And here's something that is interesting. I like what we have right here because it matches what we have right here. Finishing things off with the LED tail lights. And the one thing that is a little bit of a surprise is we don't have a real large rear roof spoiler back here. That is what we have right here, but can't complain about the rear window wiper being exposed because, well, there's no place to put it. Not a big deal. Something else that's different here compared to other BMW models is going to be the fact that we have the vertically stacked, so to speak, exhaust. Instead of being side by side, sitting on top of one another, it looks nice, I think. Tell me what you think about that. Speaking of that exhaust, let's open the hood and see what exactly is being exhausted. Under the hood is the 4.4 liter twin turbo V8. 644 horsepower, 590 pound-speed of torque, made it to an eight-speed automatic transmission. And you'll notice there is a lot of bracing here, a lot more than we see in a lot of vehicles. Definitely is necessary because there is a high amount of horsepower and a high amount of torque. And when you're going to charge, your charge port is located right here on the driver's side. When you lock the interior, it also locks this door for your charge port. We'll also find a 19.2 kilowatt battery pack here, 46 miles of combined MPGEs, and an 18.2 gallon gas tank. If you want to drive in EV mode, you can drive as much as 31 miles. If you need to do any towing with your XM, it can tow up to 7,200 pounds. Not too bad of a number. You have a power tailgate back here and 33.9 up to 72.3 of cargo capacity. And we'll just take a quick look around what's here. Now, the only thing missing here is a spare tire. Not unusual for 
something like this, a model like this, to have that be the case, just one of those things. But one interesting thing I did want to show you, I know you like to see everything maximized here, but I like how when you go to maximize the seats, that the seat is dampened as it lowers. So very nice, very easy to deal with, very convenient. And with the child safety seats back here, the legacies are booster seats, but that's taken up a little bit of space back here, but you can see some of the space that's back here. There is a lot and you have your cargo cover. And when you get ready to close the rear door, you can either push the button right here that closes the rear door, push that button, it's gonna close and lock at the same time. As we work our way into the interior to look at the luxury end of things, first of all, the patterns that you'll find not only here on the door panel, but also on the seats and on the seat backs down here in this area where you'll find the rear seat pockets. But one thing that I think is here that is very innovative that I think should be on more vehicles. How many of you have ever noticed that on most vehicles, when you have a door bend down in this area, well, it's a little bit more of a pain to get to things when the doors are closed because it's between the door and the seat right there. Instead, BMW has set everything up where the door bend is right here. Plenty of space, still have a cup holder right there. I like that. We need to see that with more automobiles, at least in my personal opinion. And there are several air conditioning vents here, not only with the door pillar, but also with the rear of the center console. We're gonna have the adjustments for our air conditioning, obviously, and some connectivity down here. A Couple of different options where that is concerned. And something that you might wonder about, a panoramic sunroof. No, there isn't one. Instead, you have a speaker and it is no small speaker. Really very interesting, that geometric texture right there, the shapes that you see mimicking, or should I say matching, what is on the door handles. You'll also see some of the ambient lighting up there. One thing I think is very interesting in the competition of luxury SUVs is that you have great ambient lighting with Mercedes-Benz, with BMW. We're still waiting to see that when it comes to Land Rover. And just so I don't leave anything out, we do have a fold down armrest with the cup holders built in. The one thing I do wish more automakers would do, instead of having the parallel cup holders like this, make them vertical like this. That way, whether there's a cup in one or both cup holders or not, this area can still be used as an armrest. The technology here is awesome. I really like what we have. Now, when you talk about technology, I can't help but mention the fact that that flickering effect you see, the kind of flashing effect that happens because of my camera, it's not really happening. And as we look around here, we're gonna have our power adjustable seats with lumbar support for the driver and passenger and the massage function. Over there on the driver, or excuse me, passenger side front door panel, we're gonna see a large door bin, large armrest, controls for seat memory and turning on the massage function as well. And we'll see the same things over here on the driver's side with the typical additional accessories and functionality. The button right here, that lets me show you the power folding side view mirrors in action. So easy to deal with where that's concerned. And obviously you have different driving modes you can drive in, an M2 activation, very important, depending on how you want to drive things. So, or how you want to handle things when driving, but you know what, when you're not on the pedal real hard, not driving spiritedly, get that great gas mileage. Large shifter paddles, that's always nice to have. I just wish they were affixed to the steering column instead of the steering wheel, because when you're moving that, well, it just makes it easier to just reach up here and change gears. If you are driving spiritedly, I know you can do it either way. It just seems more convenient right there, but not really a big deal in my personal opinion. In fact, I'm curious, how many of you actually use your shifter paddles? I'm curious to know about that. And we'll have a nice look here with the steering wheel mounted controls. There's our M logo again, should be in gold. Kind of curious about that. Just something that's very interesting that I noticed here. Now, I don't know how well you can see it because of the bright Louisiana sunshine today, but there is a head up display right there. That's a good thing to have. Also, we're gonna have our infotainment screen right here. And I like the curvature, how it's angled towards the driver. That's driver focused. So that makes things very easy to deal with. Very quick speed when you start working your way around through the different screens to get to different settings. I really like that. There's no lag whatsoever. 
until you reach the end of the options of the screens, then it stops. But I do like what we have here. Very nice look, very modern looking, easy to deal with. I like how you have great technology here, but that doesn't mean it has to be complicated. And we can go back into comfort right there and see different things that we can change depending on what we want to do. And you can see the different modes that we have. And you can set things in sport or depending on what you want to do. Let's just take a look at the options there. We can go to comfort if we wanted to with braking or we can do the same thing with steering, chassis. So depending on what you want, it doesn't all have to be the same thing. So that's nice to have. If you buy something like this, don't worry. It's very easy to learn and use. You can use what I call the hunt and peck method and just search your way around. You'll figure it out. It's not that complicated. And just to give you a quick look around here with the upper console, not a ridiculous amount going on up there. And we'll obviously have everything for our climate control here in the infotainment screen. So depending on what you want to do, there's how you get to the air conditioning. But you do have BMW here where you can say, hey, BMW, and deal with that. Voice commands. There's a lot going on there. And if you want to get in and see all of your different features and functionality with your icons right here, here's how you do it. There is a lot here. You can even watch YouTube. That's nice to have that app right there. Don't watch it when you're driving. I don't even know if it would play when you're driving, but that is there. We can go into system settings. If we need to use that. Again, I'm just hunting and pecking my way around. Easy to deal with. So that's nice to have. Depending on what you need to turn on, you can turn it on here. Very easy to deal with. I like that. We have the ventilated seats. We also have heated seats and a heated steering wheel. So that's nice to have early in the morning, believe it or not, this time of year in Louisiana. That's something we need. Kind of getting a little chilly out there now. And depending on what you want to do, you can conceal things away right here. I do have the sunglasses in the way right there, but you can see how that looks. This is not a dealership vehicle because it's purchased by my friends. So you're going to see a few things here you don't normally see in my videos. We'll obviously have wireless charging. And right here is our shifter. Now the shifter is a little bit different. I'm going to move it back and over to go into drive and over like that to go into reverse. Obviously you have multiple camera views on and around the vehicle. So depending on what you need to see and what you need to do, well, it's all here. And that overhead view is priceless. I love being able to see that well around my vehicle. I know my truck has the same thing, so that's nice to have. We can deal with that very easily. Always a nice thing. Simple shifter to use, so that's always a good thing. And Right here, for those of you who are monk-like, if you don't want fingerprints on your touchscreen, here's what you can use. You can work your way around. As you can see, I'm doing that right there without touching the screen. And then you just push down and you select on whatever it is you want, as you can see right there. And you also have everything else here. As far as one-touch buttons, we can go home, media, map, navigation, telephone, whatever it is we want to do, we can do that right there. I like that. Very simple. And how about some of our other modes. We've got M mode right here. We have our M hybrid mode. And something else not unusual for BMW is the fact that we have the Bombay doors right there. Got some stuff inside the interior of the center console. So that's nice to have plenty of space in there. And speaking of space, one more thing I do want to show right here, the glove box. I know people like to know about that, so I better show it. All right, if you hear a few things rattling around, it's just some of what's in the interior. And I apologize that the windshield is not perfectly clean, but we'll do the best we can with it. Now, the thing I like here is that great gas mileage it can be really quiet when you're cruising down the road. That is until you do this. Oh, how I love driving a vehicle that is broken in. This is not a, it is brand new, but it has enough miles on it to where I can step on it and it's not an issue. It plants you back in the seat. In fact, you can feel the back end squat down. It's really pulling when you're going down the road. A lot of fun to drive, that's for sure. Not a surprise where that's concerned, but I'll tell you what, 
it puts a smile on your face every single time you drop the hammer and put the pedal on the floor. But the good thing is, you don't have to do that all the time. You can just enjoy driving, take advantage of that great gas mileage if you want to, and when you don't want to, well, you don't have to. And with the adaptive suspension at every corner, very comfortable ride quality, that's for sure, and the seats themselves are nice and comfortable. So you have a really nice balance where that's concerned. Some vehicles out there, you don't have that balance. You have comfortable seats, but maybe the, the ride quality from the shocks and suspension is not so good. That's not the case here. Both work together very well. I really like that. Always a pleasure to drive. Pretty easy to see out of. You have a little bit of a blind spot when you look over your right shoulder. But the good thing is, obviously, you have blind spot monitoring built in. Now, the road that I'm on right now is a little bit on the rough side, and I'm putting that mildly, but I am going to let you listen. You can probably hear it right now. It seems really noisy, but that really has more to do with the road conditions than it does with anything else. So if you're curious about that, that's the case. What's interesting here, I know the fan speed is up just a little bit, but other than hearing the road noise and the tires, all that noise that's gonna come from being on a less than perfect road, far from it, I don't really hear much. I don't hear a lot of wind noise, so if you're curious about how that's going to work in something like this, well, that's what it is. And you know what? I have to step on the power pedal again, or excuse me, the gas pedal. It's really not a power pedal. Well, I guess it is when it's in EV mode, but one way or another, dropping the hammer is so much fun in this XM. It's so funny how you can drive along and think, man, I've got a great vehicle, it's getting great gas mileage, and you almost forget how much power is at your disposal until you do what I just did. A couple of things I didn't mention earlier in the video, or at least one thing, is the fact that you have the tilt and telescopically adjustable steering wheel. That's not a surprise. But if I don't say it, somebody is likely to ask about it. So I'm gonna make sure that I cover that. A great tight turning radius, by the way, so that's nice to have. Good for big city driving because it's nimble, it gets around really well, always a nice thing. And we'll take our turn right here and we'll head on down the road, get on the pedal one more time. I may have to give a gas tank to fill the gas tank for my friend. I love that. You know, it's it's big enough to where you don't get the sensation of speed as much as you might in some vehicles. The lower you are to the ground, the more sensation of speed you have. The higher you are off the ground, the less sensation of speed you have. But you definitely feel the sensation of speed in being pushed back in the seat. It's pretty interesting, but I'm glad I have that head-up display in the windshield so I can look down and see how fast I'm going. It's right there. It's easy to see. And of course, the speedometer, the digital speedometer on the instrument display is the same way. But in my opinion, I know a lot of people like for me to answer the questions I pose in the titles of my videos in the video. A lot of the time I don't do that because, well, it's up to you to make that decision for yourself. I can't really answer for you, but in this particular case, I'm going to say that the answer is yes as far as being the perfect balance of luxury, efficiency, and high performance. And there it is, the 2025 BMW XM. Is it the perfect balance of luxury, efficiency, and performance? Tell me what your thoughts are. I do want to say a special thanks to my friends who owns this XM for being kind enough to loan it to me for a little while so I could tell you all about it. And a special thanks to all of you for being kind enough to give me the opportunity to give you a vision for your next vehicle. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button. That helps me out a lot. Make sure to subscribe. That way you don't miss any future videos and share this video on your timelines so other people can see it. If you'd like to learn about additional vehicles you may wish to consider purchasing, check out the video that's on the screen right now and I'll see you there.